Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the chemical reactions of the alkaline metals. And the alkaline metals are found in group 1 of the periodic table, that's lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium. And I'm going to be showing you how lithium reacts with water, how sodium reacts with water, and my personal favourite, how potassium reacts with water. Make sure you stay around till the end of the video for a useful summary so you can remember all of this information for your exam. So at the top of group one we have lithium. So I've got some lithium in this bottle here and the first thing we need to know about lithium is it's actually kept in oil to stop it from reacting with the moisture in the air. And on the outside it looks fairly dark grey but I can cut into the lithium and that's unusual for a metal that I can cut through it with a knife. You can see it's probably a bit of a struggle for me, but I am managing to get through it. And on the inside of the lithium, we can see it's shiny, just like any other metal. And then within a few minutes, that would turn dull as it reacts with the air. So I'm just going to cut a slightly smaller piece of lithium. Chop that in half. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do is... Dab that on the paper towel to remove any excess oil that's on the outside. And then that is ready to go in the water to see how it reacts with water. So I'm going to put a piece of lithium in the water. And as soon as it goes in, we can see it's fizzing, it's producing hydrogen gas. It's also producing a lot of steam. It's giving out a lot of heat energy. It's an exothermic reaction and the water around it is turning straight into steam and being given off. Also notice that the lithium floats on the surface of the water and it bobbles about as it's producing that hydrogen gas. Now if I put in there some universal indicator, we can see it's gone blue, which shows an alkaline has been made, which is lithium hydroxide. So the two products are the hydrogen gas that we've seen with the fizzing, and we've just shown now, it's also made lithium hydroxide. Now I'm going to cut a piece of sodium, which is the second alkali metal as we go down group one. So this time when I cut through it, you can see it slices much more easily. It's softer than the lithium. And once again, it's shiny on the inside, but it's gone much duller on the outside because it's reacted with the oxygen in air. And once again, I'm going to dab it on the paper towel just to get rid of that excess, the excess oil that it's been stored in and then put it on a dry part of the tile. Same again with this piece. And now that's ready to add to the water. So I'm going to put a piece of sodium in the water. Let's see what happens. So you can see it melts into a ball. It's even more exothermic, giving off more heat than lithium. Lots of steam, showing us that all that heat energy being given off. It's floating on the surface. It's moving around on the surface. We can hear the fizzing as the hydrogen gas is being produced as well. And it's moving around on the surface. These are all things you need to be remembering for your exam in case you get asked a question like, what happens if, or what would you see if you put a piece of lithium or sodium into water? Now, before we move on to see potassium, my favourite one, if you're finding this video useful, please remember to subscribe, hit the button below. Now, let's get on and see what happens with potassium. So, I've got here a piece of potassium. Once again, I'll cut a piece off it. This time, the knife really does cut through that very easily. Put the rest of it back in the bottle of oil and it's once again nice and shiny on the inside. So I'll cut that into a couple of smaller pieces. Dab the oil off once again. Now you'll notice I'm handling all of these with tweezers because if I was to touch them with my fingers, it would start reacting with the moisture in my fingers and give off a lot of heat and burn my fingers. And I'm also wearing safety goggles as well. So here we go, the one we've been waiting for, potassium. Let's see what happens. So straight away, it's set on fire. It's got that lovely lilac colored flame, which is a pinky purple. The reaction's over in a matter of seconds. It's reacted much quicker. We saw steam given off 
and also moving across the surface and floating. Let's see, one more piece of potassium. Some of the sparks are the last bits of the um, oil burning off that it's been kept in. Look at that lilac coloured flame. So we can see quite clearly as we're going down group one, the reactivity is getting much more reactive as we go down the group. Now that potassium's finished reacting, let's do the universal indicator test. And no surprise there, it's going blue, which shows us that an alkali is made. So this time the alkali will be potassium hydroxide being made alongside the hydrogen gas that was also made. One last thing you need to know about the alkali metals is how to write the equations for the reactions we've just seen. So, the word equations for the foundation tier, if we had sodium that we put in water, it makes sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen, all that fizzing that we saw. Higher tier, also need to be able to write the symbol equations for this. So sodium is Na, we all know that water is H2O, and it makes sodium hydroxide, which is the alkali, plus hydrogen. And then we would need to balance each side, which would take a 2, and a 2, and a 2. Now if the question instead was potassium, then it would be exactly the same. Potassium plus water makes potassium hydroxide and hydrogen and sulfur. And in that case, the symbol equation would be potassium plus water makes potassium hydroxide and hydrogen. And once again, to balance it, we would need a two in these positions here. So stay watching for that all-important summary of everything we've learned so far about the alkaline metals.